Welcome back to In Scripture. I'm Father Joshua Whitfield of St. Rita Catholic Community in Dallas, Texas. We are looking at the Gospel according to Mark. In this episode, we begin chapter 3, looking at verses 1 through 6. Uh, but let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, be in my head and in my understanding. God, be in my eyes and in my looking. God, be in my mouth and in my speaking. God, be in my heart and in my thinking. God, be at my end and my departing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us begin right away and uh, look at uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 uh, by reading them. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. And they watched him to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent, and he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to them, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the last um, of the five controversy stories that we have uh, gone through, uh, beginning in chapter 2. Uh, and this is also the most bitter uh, of, of those controversy stories. Um, it ends with uh, Pharisees and Herodians, uh, normally two groups that wouldn't have much to do with each other, conspiring to uh, uh, destroy him, as it says. Uh, in verse 6 of chapter 2, they're just kind of murmuring in their hearts. Um, but in chapter 6 of verse 3, and they're, they're, they're conspiring against him to kill him, right? And so... So we, we have followed these controversy stories and, and, and watched it all grow darker. Um, and these last two controversy stories uh, involving the Sabbath um, are characteristic of, of, of other stories in the other Gospels uh, involving the Sabbath, right? It was, a, it was a hot topic. It was a tense topic involving um, accusations of blasphemy, uh, of, of dishonoring God, um, and, and uh, especially in John's gospel, of, of what, do you, what is Jesus saying about himself, right? Is he likening himself? Uh, is he equating himself with the Father, right? Um, tense stuff. This passage is really an illustration of um, verse 27 of chapter 2. At the end of the, the previous passage, Jesus says, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Uh, as I've said before, uh, Jesus uh, is not questioning the, the Sabbath. Uh, he's not an anti-Sabbath um, person. Uh, it's a sacred thing, and, and, and it's rooted in the DNA of, of the Hebrew people of Israel. Uh, he just had a different understanding of its place and its purpose than his interlocutors, right? Uh, he, he said, uh, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What he meant by that was um, human flourishing, healing, mercy, justice, these things um, sh should not be hindered, should not be sh halted, should not be, should not be stopped by uh, a legalistic observance of the Sabbath, right? And, and, and so therefore he heals a man on the Sabbath, 
even though some may interpret that to be work, right? Jesus fundamentally is just saying to, to his interlocutors, no, you, you missed the point, right? No, you may think it's work that dishonors God, but it doesn't because God likes healing, <laughs> you know? God likes the flourishing of his children. Um, so, so, so Jesus is not saying the Sabbath is not important, he just has a radically different view of what the Sabbath um, looks like than the Pharisees and the Herodians and the scribes, right? Uh, and, and it is a uh, tense, tense argument. Uh, in, in this passage, you see Jesus willingly enter into this conflict. Uh, um, at other times, the sick are brought to Jesus, uh, but it's on the Sabbath that Jesus actively seeks the sick, right? And, and so Jesus knew what he was doing. You know, he, 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 was, he was stepping up to the fight. He was stepping into the fight. He was um, uh, intentionally being provocative here. Uh, and so let, let's dive into the text. Again, he entered the synagogue, right? So um, we, we know from ever since chapter 1 um, that, that Jesus went to the synagogue, he preached in, in all the synagogues there, it says in chapter 1, verse 39. Um, his first miracle uh, on his very first day was an exorcism in uh, at the synagogue, um, and the reaction to that first miracle was um, amazement, as it says in verse 27. Uh, the reaction to this miracle in chapter 3 will be gr grim silence, right? Um, Mark says nothing about people being amazed uh, by this miracle at all. They're just stone silent. Um, so it's a, it's a different tone completely in this passage than uh, the healing miracle in the synagogue at, in chapter 1. Um, and we know that this passage... Um, you know, picks up on verse 27 of chapter 2 uh, in, in, in the way Mark phrases it, verse 1. Again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there, right? Um, the Sabbath uh, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Well, here's the man, right? Here's the, here's the representative man uh, to, to depict the moral of chapter 2. Um, and he's a man who had a withered hand. Uh, the, the suggestion is uh, that you know he may have been born with it, a long, long-term malady of, of some sort. Uh, and they watched him. They presumably the, the Pharisees uh, who um, were watching them walk through the fields. You know, uh, and and again, it's a very tense thing. You know, they they were watching him. Right? You get this very sort of. Um, tightly wound um, powder keg of uh, of, a, of, a, um, of a moment, right? Um, they were watching Jesus, observing him, actually, it means in the Greek, um, watching him closely. Why? To see whether he would uh, heal him on the Sabbath uh, so that they might accuse him. Um, you know, the question was whether healing like this on the Sabbath uh, was a violation, right? Life-threatening um, conditions, uh, you know, which required life-saving help or life-saving medical intervention, that, that clearly was not a violation of the Sabbath. Everybody agreed to that. The debate came in in these sort of lesser cases, right? Well, what about the man with the withered hand? Um, it, does that rise to the level uh, of, of seriousness um, that, that, say, you know, choking <laughs> would, would be? Um, that, that's where the debate was. And, and the thing here is that Jesus tries to have that debate. Uh, but his interlocutors don't want to have it. Their, their response is to not engage the debate, but to just be quiet and conspire against him. Uh, 
uh, as, as Mark says, they, so that they might accuse him, right? Uh, charge him, bring charges against him. The, 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 the language there is, it, is it explicitly ju judicial, right? It's the same language that we'll see again in chapter 15 um, when they bring charges against him to Pilate. Um, and, and so that's the picture. They're, they're, they're watching him. They're observing him closely, not in a friendly sort of way, but so that they might find a charge against him. Uh, and, and they're just waiting for him. You know, they're kind of baiting him, you know, so to speak. Um, now, this this uh, person to be healed, this man with a withered hand, he himself is not begging to be healed. These poor guys are just kind of sitting, sitting there, right? Um, you don't get in these other sort of healing stories. You, you don't get. He's not. He's not going into Jesus and begging to be healed. Uh, so it says there in verse 3, and he said to the man, this Anthropos, it says, you know, this, this is the man of verse 227. Uh, and he said to the man with the withered hand, come here, right? You get the sense of Jesus uh, very boldly, strongly just saying, come here now. Uh, now what's interesting, this translation is interesting. It says, come here. The, it literally, literally the word there, agire in, in Greek, is literally it's rise up. So Jesus looks at this guy with a rise hand and he says, rise up. All right now that's elusive because in so many other healing stories in Mark's gospel, the verb to rise up uh, is used to describe what happens when people are healed. They rise up, right? It's also the same verb used to describe the resurrection of Jesus, right? So is, is Mark, is, is this an illusion? You know, um, it's just interesting how Mark uses that verb to describe healing and resurrection. And, and here it's kind of like a, a command which will lead to healing, get up, right? And again, you get the sense of Jesus who's ready for a fight, all right? Get up, he says. Um, where am I? And, they, and he said to them, again, this is the Pharisees, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? Um, now, it's interesting here, again, I think the, the image here is of Jesus maybe being a little bit cocky. <coughs> maybe Jesus uh, uh, a little bit stirred up to fight back, um, you know, because he's using the same sort of verbiage that was used in chapter 2, um, verse 24, right? When the Pharisees saw them walking through the field, uh, the Pharisees said, uh, it's not lawful on the Sabbath for you to be doing that. And so Jesus kind of takes their words and throws it back at them here, it seems, in uh, verse 4 of chapter 3 when he says, is it lawful? You know? And so you get, this, you get this beautiful sort of image of Jesus you know, being followed by these Pharisees and Jesus um, kind of being at his wit's end about it. Uh, and, and so he's, you want to fight? Let's bring it. You know? and, um, and so he says, is it lawful? So he, he engages and he starts this, this argument. Um, and again, his point is, you know, is it, is it good, uh, you know, is it lawful to do good or to do harm or to save life or to kill? Now, the answer to this question, obviously, is, well, yeah, it's good to do good and it's good to save life. And, and so the answer to the question is yes. And, and there's probably an allusion here to... Uh, you know, sort of these great moments like uh, Mattathias, for example, in Maccabees, uh, very famously chose to uh, fight on the Sabbath, right? To fight war on the Sabbath, right? Instead of dying, right? And, and, and so that sort of was an exemplary sort of moment in, in, in Israel, Isra Israelite history where, yeah, you, sometimes you're going to have to violate the Sabbath. And so Jesus is saying, okay, if you can do that, if you can violate the Sabbath there to save life, to fight, you know, in that instance, well, why can't, why can't I sort of heal this? Why, why can't I do the same in this smaller instance, right? Why can't I heal this guy with a withered hand? Um, some texts uh, on this story uh, try to suggest that uh, this guy with a withered hand was like a stonemason, and so, you know, by healing him, you're saving his livelihood and therefore saving his life, so therefore, but, the, but Mark certainly didn't get into that at all. Uh, you know, he, he's, Jesus is just making an argument uh, from, a, from a, a greater example to a lesser instance and saying, why not, right? Um, and um, 
And, and that's his argument, right? That's his argument. Uh, why can't I do this on the Sabbath? But look at the end of verse 4. But they were silent, right? So Jesus wants to have this argument about the, about the nature of the Sabbath. Jesus wants to have this argument about, okay, what can you do on the Sabbath? I think, I think, I think Pharisees, you're wrong, right? I, I, think, I think you're misconstruing the whole purpose and project of the Sabbath, Jesus is saying. But they don't want to get into it. Why? Right? But they were silent. And that, that is what sets Jesus off, basically, right? Uh, in verse 5 of chapter 3, you, you get, uh, and you don't get this in Matthew or Luke, they, they take this out of their versions of the story. But in Mark, he, he keeps it. It's this wonderful uh, revelation of Jesus' emotion, right? Jesus, Jesus is emotional and angry in this passage. There in verse 5, he says, he looked around at them with anger. He looks around at them and he's angry. Uh, and grieved at their hardness of heart, right? Now he's angry. Now anger is associated with wrath, right? And, 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 and wrath in humans is always associated with vice, right? Um, almost always associated with the vice. Uh, but in God, wrath in, in the Old Testament, wrath is, is God's response to human evil, right? Mess with the widow and the orphan, the wrath of God, right? That sort of thing. Wrath is, 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 is what, what wickedness and evil will, will, will meet at the end of time, right? So um, uh, wrath in, in Hebrew scripture is not, is not um, something to be embarrassed by. Wrath is a manifestation of God's uh, pure justice, right? And, 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 so, and so there's a hint of that. Jesus looking around, these Pharisees who think it's a problem to heal the man's hand. Um, and so he's angry, right? There's, there's, there's something about this which is like divine anger. And he's grieved by their hardness of heart. Uh, they're, they're, I love this word in Greek, the sclerocardia, right? Like sclerosis. Uh, of the heart, uh, sclerocardia, hardens of heart. And, and, and again, in, in the Bible, it's like a technical term. And, and it describes people in the Hebrew Scriptures in the New Testament, it describes people who have shut themselves off from God, right? Shut themselves off from God and, and, and to what God is doing, right? Um, now, it's interesting in, in Matthew, and rather Mark's Gospel, um, you know, not only do the Pharisees and people like that suffer from sclerocardia. So do, on occasion, the disciples, as we'll see when we get to, uh, I think, chapter 6 and um, somewhere else. Um, uh, the, uh, chapter 8. The, the disciples uh, suffer from sclerocardia uh, from time to time, too, just as you and, and, and I probably suffer from sclerocardia, hardness of heart, um, at times. You know, it's, it's, it's just a... It's a, an amazing image that, that names our sometimes willful, hard-headed, stubborn resistance to, to what God is doing in the world and in our life. Sclerocardia, right? You know, um, I mean, you can just meditate on that for a long, long time. How often, you know, uh, have you, uh, or, or, uh, how many times have you suffered from sclerocardia in your life? Um, uh, me, uh, a number of times. So, uh, so Jesus is, is angry. It's a beautiful just a picture of, of his raw emotion. He's angry. Uh, and so he looks at this man, and again, it's a command. First he said, come here, you know, rise. Here, he doesn't say, be healed. He doesn't touch him or do anything like that. <laughs> Jesus just looks at him and says, stretch out your hand, right? You get the sense of Jesus just mad. <laughs> I just love it. Um, he says, he looks at the man and he says, Stretch out your hand, right? He stretched it out, and his hand was restored immediately, right? So um, it's just, I, I would love to see this sort of depicted. Uh, now, what's the response? What's the response to this miracle, which everybody saw because they were watching? It's a public miracle. What's the response? It's not as it, as it was in chapter 
one, at the very beginning of his ministry, where everybody said, wow, you know, that's, there. that's amazing, you know. That response is gone. What you have in chapter 3, we're turning in a corner toward tension, violence, darkness. What you have in chapter 3, in verse 6, is this. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him, right? So up to this point, that phrase, we come across that phrase, and immediately, Caiuthus. Up to this point, it's, it's Jesus who's been operating really quickly, and immediately, and immediately, you know, going from place to place to place, healing, preaching, doing all that stuff. Um, here it's the Pharisees. Now they are Caiuthus. Now they are acting immediately, right? But it's for a different purpose. They're conspiring. Um, they're, they're taking counsel um, to destroy Jesus, right? And this, 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 this council, this conspiracy will, will, um, uh, will come to fruition in chapter five. I mean, not chapter five, chapter fifteen uh, of John's uh, uh, of Mark's gospel. Bells are confusing me. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's a remarkable um, moment, right? Where, where the Pharisees have been, have been following him, watching him, harassing him a little bit, and Jesus is kind of put out. He's angry, he's grieved at their sclerocardia, and, and he says to the guy, come here, stretch out your hand, right? You, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, and so the Pharisees and the Herodians, and Herodians, by the way, were likely, more than likely, just followers of uh, Herod and Antipas, who, who was the ruler of Galilee at the time. To, to, to put him to death, and, and, and as I said, that will culminate in, in the Passion, uh, in chapter 15. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, this is the first sort of instance of, of the conspiracy to kill Jesus, but, but the irony of the story is, is that, you know, in, in verse 4, Jesus says, it is, is it lawful to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? Presumably by their mouths, the Pharisees would have said, well, it's better to save life, obviously. Uh, it's better to do, God, to, to do good and then harm. So by their lips, they would have said, yeah, it's it, save life. <clears throat> but here in verse 6, we see that, that their actions are different. It's ironic. You know, their, their actions actually show that they're bent on death, not life. Right, uh, so so you just see you see the tension, and and then the conflict between Jesus's vision of the kingdom, uh, and 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 the vision held by the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Herodians. Right, two radically different projects, two radically different visions that that are just hitting each other, and and and, and it will come to a final conflict on Good Friday. Um, and, and again, just to not not to start preaching on you, uh, but 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 this is the conflict uh, that you see in the world today between between the kingdom of God, right? Uh, what Christians should be living and preaching, and and the the other projects in the world, right? Secular, political, what have you, right? Um, we Christians need need to dive back into the scriptures and, and, and hear again the radical nature, the radical truth of, of the kingdom Jesus preached, right? And then to live it. Uh, I do believe that's the biggest challenge for we people who call ourselves Christians today. Uh, anyway, that, uh, that's all I got. Uh, we'll dive into... Uh, uh, verse 7 of chapter 3 next time. God bless. Bye.